All right, Coach Papish. First things first, uh, it's a school night, and you are up entirely too late here talking. But uh, uh, 9 o'clock, normally that's my bedtime on a school night. I don't know about you. When do you normally get it? hit the sack? Yeah, normally about 9, 9.30. Yeah, so uh, we're in strange times right now, aren't we? Oh, it's crazy. It's super crazy. Yeah, so uh, how far are we off? Dude, it's still March, by the way. It's still yeah, March. Not. What are you going to do when you wake up tomorrow and you're, you're – uh, it says March 32nd on the calendar. Are you gonna Are you gonna lose your mind? <laughs> <laughs> I might, man. I don't uh, know. Yeah, it's um, crazy. You know, I talked to you at Wadsworth, and you talked about controlling the things you can control in short windows, right? Yep. That's something you guys talk about um, with your wrestlers. Uh, obviously, something very out of our control right now: coronavirus, um, COVID nineteen. Um, we're in the middle of a, a pandemic, a global pandemic, uh, you know, and, and if you look, uh, big things flatten the curve, right? So that we don't have these cases doing this and it flattens out like this, right? Yeah. Um, I don't even know. What do you say to your guys right now? I mean, you know, cancellation was last week. You know, we got the, the last Thursday. We're sitting on Monday right now, but uh, cancellation was last week. What, what, where were you guys when you found out, by the way, the Thursday before the start of the tournament? Uh, you know what? Um, we were going to leave in about two hours from the time they announced it. And Mr. My AD is pretty involved with the OHSAA. So when I came in the morning, he goes, it's not looking good. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I don't know if you guys are going to make it down. I'm like, oh, crap. And uh, when they announced that it was postponed, I went to go grab everyone. It was seventh period. And at Aurora, everyone has Chromebooks. So by the time I pulled them all out of class and brought them to the wrestling room, they already all knew. They were crying, and we kind of just cried together for about 10, 15 minutes and just shared some good memories on the year and everything. Try to um, try to get past it. And I, you know, I told them, I go, I, I don't know how you guys are feeling. I can't, like the seniors, I can't put that into words. Uh, I, I just, I, I don't know, but I love you guys, and I'm here for you for the end. And, yeah, it, it, it hurts me, too. I've been talking to uh, you know Scott Hibner, Todd Haverdale, all these guys. Obviously, Hibner's big competition for you guys out of Lake Catholic. You guys beat them in probably what a lot of people are calling the duel of the year and the regional final. And then yeah, um, but- you know that that's big competition for you. They had an unbelievable district tournament. Um, you guys, how did you feel like you guys performed in your district tournament, Coach Pappas? You know, um, you know, hot and cold. We had five district champs, which is pretty sweet. We had six in the finals and for first and second. But, uh, you know, I thought we were going to get nine out. I had two left behind that uh, um, I thought for sure we're going to get out, and they ended up fifth and sixth. I also had a kid that I thought was going to make it that didn't make it out of the sectional, but the four kids from his sectional are the four kids who made it. And then uh, are you serious? my 120, wow. yeah, wow. Bo to Julius. It was uh, – it was crazy. We knew going into sectionals, who if you make it out of here, you're making it to states. And yeah, he lost a tight barn burner to the kid, the match to go to the kid who ended up third at the district. So that was tough. Um, but you know, I told him, I go, that's what sectionals used to be like. Nowadays, it's like cakewalk. But back in the day, sectionals used to be brutal. Um, but then my 120 was a huge surprise. No one seen him making it out at all, except for a bunch of kids on my team kept saying Antoine's gonna make it out I'm like oh okay okay and uh yeah he made it out so what did Aurora end up with total qualifier seven we had seven we took second at the district okay and then who won your district uh Louisville and then was Lake Lake Catholic third Lake Catholic was third and then there was a big drop from there it's basically probably uh Canfield had a bad district tournament, I think, but it might have been Canfield or St. V's, maybe. Okay. I mean, the, Northeast Ohio in Division Two was really tough this yeah. year. Yeah. And, um, and we, had, we had CBCA there, too. Yeah, that's right. So they had some guys, too. They, what, they have four qualifiers? Four or five. Yeah. And so, I mean, you look at it, Northeast Ohio was back up, and that was a big disadvantage for you guys. You know, when I talked to uh, Laughlin uh, from uh, Louisville. And that was the big thing we we're talking about is how many could you guys get through, 
You know, how many guys could you get through the state? Because that's the big advantage Graham has over you guys. They always qualify so many. Yeah. Not this year, though. No, not this year. What they end up with, eight? I think they ended up with eight. Yeah. So the, the big winners going into the state tournament were probably you guys, Lake Catholic, obviously Louisville, and then Graham. It was going to be – there was some parity this year. They weren't just going to win. Yeah. yeah, and, uh, you know, I felt more confident at the states and the districts. Just I felt like as crazy as this sounds because the district was loaded, but it was a little bit watered down. And the deeper the water got, the tougher the tournament got, I felt like the advantage went to us because my big dogs – we're going to do their things. I mean, I, I look at like the Brexville tournament. We took fourth there without Evan, who was a district champ. And the deeper, the tougher the tournament got, I got those kids that uh, were going to pull through. So I was feeling pretty confident. Like we knew districts, we could have won it, but uh, we weren't really, we were just focused on advancing. And then the state tournament, we were feeling pretty confident. Uh, in, in looking at it, you know, they postponed us for almost a month, about three weeks. Um, did you know right away, like you said, you guys are in the wrestling room, you know, you're having a moment. Did you know pretty much right away, like, this probably isn't happening? Oh, I, I knew. I just go, I go, how are they going to have kids make weight? And number one, and if we can't train, what are they going to say? Two weeks to train and then make weight and let's go. It's, I knew right then and there. Yeah, and so you have how many seniors on the team this year, Coach Papish? Uh, we only had two seniors, but I mean, David was a district champ and Ethan was a district runner up. Ethan, who I'm actually going to talk to Ethan tonight. Hopefully yep. might be too late though. Cause Ethan's a Naval Academy guy, right? He is a Naval Academy guy. He might be in his regiment already. You never know, right? Like, <laughs> that's what his life's going to be for about the next nine years. If you don't know that. Yeah. A lot of regiment, yeah. you know, a lot of, uh, but right now maybe he can be a kid, you know what I mean? But. You know, you look at that, you lose a guy who's going you – you lose two D1 guys. Let's just put it that way. You got a guy going to OU and you got a guy going to the Naval Academy. It's yeah. not like you're losing nothing, man. Come on. Well, I mean, last year we lost four kids going D1. We had – Gar went to Columbia. Gorman went to Cleveland State. Uh, McGee went to Old Dominion. And McNamara went to OU. So – Jeez, oh, Pete. And then this year we got two kids going D1. And we got a lot of sophomores. Sophomores and a couple of juniors pretty much. So you're loaded coming back. Um, I know you really can't worry about what Graham's got coming back. I'm, first off, I like Graham's 220. That guy is yeah. a hammer. Like, he was going to win this year. Yeah, he's tough. He's really tough. Uh, Evan beat him a few times last year, and this year they were a weight class apart. Yeah. So when you yeah, look at that, they got a guy they're probably going to win. Who did, did they bring back, like, Martin? Who did they even bring back? I don't even know. Like, Gessler and, and, and who did they bring back? Do you know? Uh, Gessler, Moore, and Martin, and their 220. Oh, man, they bring all those guys back. So it's going to even probably be better yeah. next year. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be tight. And, uh, you know, if you look at us, we bring back Fishback, Lillard, Evan Anderson, Nick Willingham. And, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, those are our, they were all district champs. You bring back four district champs. We had four sophomores win the district. Oh, my God. <laughs> the green men are loaded. And then you got late Catholic. They bring back six of their eight qualifiers. Yeah. I mean, it is – I mean, next year, like, I, you know, I was talking to people. Division One was going to be great. You know, uh, Wadsworth had a great district tournament. Brexville, obviously. And then, you know, Eds and, and Illyria. It was going to be a dogfight. And then I don't even know how many LaSalle got. But, like, LaSalle wasn't the LaSalle of last year, obviously. So, yeah, uh, I, I felt bad for, uh, you know, Bernie. I thought this was going to be a year year. And in my opinion, he's the best coach in Ohio. It would be nice to see him win that title. Yeah, and his kid, his kid's a senior, too. Um, he, yeah. he has another kid, too, obviously, with Nate. But, yeah, Bernie, I mean, you know, he's my guy. So I, you're not going to hear me say otherwise. He's just a great coach, a great guy. I mean, oh, you don't make him better than Bernie, you know? Yeah, it doesn't. Um, and then Todd. <laughs> You know, Todd does a great job at uh, – are you guys all in that same league? Is, there, is it Brexville, Aurora, Wadsworth? And Wadsworth. Oh, yeah. my God. And uh, Medina Highlands in there, and they're on the come up. Oh, my God. That's your league? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty tough league. How did you guys – were you second or third in the league this year? We were third. Uh, Brexville won it, Wadsworth was second, and then we were third. You have two top 50 teams, and you're a fringe top 50 team. 
That's tough. It's brutal. Uh, so what was really tough was two years ago, they had it the week after the state dual finals, which Brexville, Wadsworth, and us were all at. And then uh, we went right into the conference tournament, into the sectional. So this past year, they brought it to January 4th. So it was the weekend after Brexville. Oh, wow. Wow. They yeah. made it like a month and a half earlier. Yeah. So this year, they're taking it to the end of January. Last weekend of January. Do you think the OHSAA, if we'd have done our week, you know, everybody was super mad about the, we started a week later this year. We start the week that we normally start. We get this tournament in. Yeah, we could have, we could have had the tournament. Uh, I don't know why they started late. Uh, it, when, it, when it first came out, I wasn't complaining because our football team's pretty good. And I knew they were going to make a deep run. They made the final four. So... Like, I, Fishback plays football. We didn't have him in the beginning of the year. That's why he missed Ironman. But when it first came out, I'm like, oh, this is good. He's, it will help him out a little bit. But, man, it was just it was so late. We do normal things, and we have our tournament. Yeah. But like you're saying, we just you can't foresee this, dude. And, you know, you talk to people. Um, Mark Haywald said Frank Romano's on his staff. Frank Romano's like 72 or 73 years old. Frank Romano's like, I've never seen anything like this in my life. He's been coaching over 50 years. He's like, I've yeah. never, ever seen, and this is unprecedented. Yeah. I, uh, um, you know, I, I was lucky to wrestle for him, and he was one of my mentors. His coaching is Dick Bliss, who's in the Hall of Fame and coached 50 years. And I talked to him about it. He's like, yeah, we're living in a time of history. Yeah. This is, this is history right now. This has never happened before. Crazy thing about, you know, Dick Bliss, you guys were state champs in 94 or 95. When was Aurora State? 95? 95. 95, and Tim Cortad was on that team. I just watched a highlight of him wrestling Brock Lesnar and taking him down right away. Yeah. It just looked like two big, gigantic, super athletic guys, and Lesnar just kind of overwhelmed him. Yeah, it seems like he does that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. But, like, you guys have had some really good guys. Josh Schroeder was on that 95 team. He was really good. Yeah. Josh Schroeder. Uh, you know, it's crazy. They were D3. And they had four state placers, two champs, and two fits, and they won it. Like that, that that's crazy. That You're doesn't happen now. Not doing that anymore, dude. Like if you look yeah. at the teams that Ravenna won with, if you look at the teams that uh, Claymont won with with Coach Tokenin, you look at the teams. Clyde, one year Clyde won. They had three. Clyde had three champs and a qualifier. They had three champs and a qualifier because Clyde won it the same year. Clyde won at ninety five. When you guys won it, they were D two yeah. champs. They had three. They had four guys. One guy didn't place, Chad Long didn't place, and then three champs, and they won. That's crazy. Right? It's a, just a different era, man. Um, You know, talking about Anderson. Anderson's going to the Naval Academy. They got transferred here. I, we, I, I don't really know if it's a, it's a dad job transfer. Is that why Anderson's here? They moved from the Lima area, right? Yep, yep. So, like, that's one of those true transfers. Like, Blake Saito went from Olentangy Liberty to Perrysburg, but dad got his job moved. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, like, you guys have had your share of actual guys transfer over. You had a couple guys transfer over. But when they move like that and you just have somebody fall in your lap, you have a Naval Academy guy fall in your lap. What's that like? Oh, it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, um, and his brother was a junior high state champ coming in as a freshman. And then he was a district qualifier who had 40-plus wins. And Ethan's uh, state placer last year. I think he would have placed again this year. Evan was an alternate as a freshman at 82 and won the district at 95 this year at a hell of a district tournament. You guys, it's crazy how loaded you guys are coming back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people talk about the transfers. Well, we're not open enrollment. You have to move to Aurora. And, I mean, you live in this area. You're not finding anything cheap in Aurora. Yeah, Aurora's not cheap real estate at all. It's like out here where I live in Auburn Township. You don't find anything under two hundred thousand dollars if it's yeah. a house. Like if that's you do, how Aurora is, and, and we're not open enrollment. So if you come in here, you you actually have to live here. I don't think there's an apartment complex in this township where I live. Really? Yeah, we, we have a few, but it's like Barrington Apartments, Lakes Apartments. It's going to be a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I mean, still, yeah, you're still paying a thousand bucks a month. Yeah, I mean, that's not cheap. That's not no. not like you can go into Cleveland and get a maybe a five six hundred dollar a month apartment. Which yeah. is still not that cheap, man. And that you know, let's just talk about the economic impact. You know, who you got in the behind you there? Who's behind you? Oh, I got a cat, Rio. <laughs> uh, 
But, you know, let's just talk economic impact. Um, you and I are both teachers. You're special ed on social studies. Um, dude, if this goes into the 18 months that they say, they're going to have to start cutting staff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just, you, can't, you can't keep us on because it goes off people's property taxes. Are people going to be able to keep their houses? You know what I mean? The economic impact is huge. Yeah, it, it's 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 scary. Um, when they when they told us to pack up two Mondays ago, they said pack like it's the end of the year. It might not be, but be ready for it to be. And so we had the two weeks off, and then this Monday we started our online learning. Same thing here. Same thing here. I actually got to do a quick uh, lecture on the War of eighteen twelve when we're done here. And uh -huh. um, yeah, I got to do that and post it to my online classroom so the kids can watch it. They got a quiz Friday, but like, um, yeah, man, it's just, it's just, we're in strange times when we talk about it, you know, like, what do you foresee in the future? If you had to, you could go to work for your wife's, your wife's, uh, family company, right? If you had to. Yeah. So if I had to, I, I would, but right now, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's, it's a scary time. Like you, like, I don't know. We don't know what it's going to be. Yeah, and then what is what is her family's company? Uh, her family's company is Great Lakes Petroleum, so they're like a oil distributor. So that's not a bad business to be in, just so you know. If you didn't know that, that's not a terrible yeah. business to be in. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's essential, so they're still working. Yeah. Oh, what, So what are you doing on a daily basis, Coach Pappish? Obviously, I know Todd Haverdell sits around and worries about wrestling. He has no hobbies. He didn't even know anything about Bex Brexville Reservation. I think I've been there more times than he has. He sits around and worries about wrestling. You got a 20 month old. What do you do on your day to day basis now in this new normal for us? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I play with the daughter all the time. It's, uh, miss out on so much of wrestling. I leave the house at 6 30 a.m. and I get home at like 6 37 and she goes to bed at 8 39. So it's just nice hanging out with her as much as I am. I help my uh, wife's family company out from time to time. They need some labor stuff. Uh, I, I watch Flow a lot. Yeah, watch a lot of Flow. Yeah. Do you watch, watch the live stream? The Mark Bader, li Mark Bader puts together these like live stream things. Yeah, yeah, I, I keep up on all that. And, um, my community focus, which used to be Cable Nine, covers a lot of our stuff. So, like earlier today, I was watching our matches from State Duels. I watched that grand match again. Wait Just, a minute. Uh, you need to be watching all that stuff on GoHioCast. I don't know what you're doing, Coach Pappish. I'm disappointed. I'm not going to lie well, to you. I, I watch it on there, too. I watch okay. it on there. Uh, we did the, I did the overhead, I think, with one of those. One of those matches I just did, like, the full duel, didn't you? Yeah, that, that was with Graham. Yeah, the Graham one. I did the full duel. And then we did the final last year with you guys. That final, yeah. that crazy final last year, right? Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I I think we were the only ones you were we the only ones you could get it on last year. Were we the only ones you could watch it on, or did Cable Nine do it last year? Cable Nine did it last year too. So, so it was like us and them, and that was I, it. I, I watch them both. The cool thing with the Cable Nine is uh, Brian Brinkman's one of their commentators. Oh, is he so still? Nice, yeah, so it's nice to see him and listen to that from time to time. But uh, you know, if we're at home on the Roku stick, I'll watch that. If I'm on my laptop, I'm watching you on YouTube. There you go. I mean, dude, I don't care. What's nine? It doesn't matter to me. I cover a lot more stuff than they do because, like, they do it. They're they're taking like a broadcast tech and stuff. Like, I'm a lot more yeah. I'm a lot more nimble than than them, you know, in that sense. But mine's all internet, and it's not the quality of theirs. You know what I mean? They got graphics and everything else. I don't have any graphics. Yeah, they're pretty much just Aurora, Twinsburg, Nordornia stuff. Yeah, they do a great job. But yeah, there's no question. I actually just subscribed to that channel. And they've got all their old school stuff on it. Like old, Yeah, yeah, they got a 80s. bunch of like old stuff from the 90s. Yeah, 80s and 90s. I like watching that stuff. They do a good job. Yeah. What's his name? Jeff, uh, what's Jeff's name? Cole? Jeff Cole. Yep. Jeff Cole does a good job. And, and Brian Brakeman. And there's one other dude. Who's the other dude? Old Chanel guy, I want to say. Uh, Greg Bizjeff. Yeah. He, is he a Chanel guy? Uh, he's a Walsh guy. Is he a Walsh guy? Okay. Yeah, those guys yeah. do a good job. I like them. Um, So, you know, you do have all this information at your fingertips. You know, you can look at it. But you can only break down Alec Martin so many times. You know what I mean? You can only you can only break down uh, what is it uh, Gessler so many times. You can only break down uh, Cole Hibner so many times, right? Like you can only break down your opponent so many times in a match. What else do you do with your time? But so you go and you work for the company, 
do you work for them every day or with your daughter every day? What Are you at home? What do you do? Uh, you know, the first week I was at home, and then uh, last week I was working. So mixing it up. I, I can't stay in the house all day. I'll go, I'll go crazy. I got to move around and stuff. Do you guys live on any property? No, no, no. We have a condo. So You're in a condo, okay. Yeah. So you guys are right there. You got people next to you. Is, that, is it like a ghost town when you go out there? Because like we're out in the country, and I and I run on the road like I ran uh, yesterday on the road. I don't see another person. And you know what? In our in our condo, there's a lot of dog walkers. Like year round, these people are always walking their dogs. So I go outside. Like we walk every day, and I'll see three or four people walking. Okay, so you're seeing people. You're you're actually they're out there doing what they're doing anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you look at it moving forward, uh, will your daughter go to Twinsburg right now? Uh, right now she'd go to Twinsburg, but we, we'd probably go to St. Rita's. St. Rita, and then eventually, where would you think, like, where would you send her to high school? Mm, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, You're not open enrollment, but you teach there. Can they let your kids in? Do you guys no, have that rule? No. We get, no, only people who are grandfathered in. I think they got rid of it uh, maybe five years ago. Got it. Okay. So you can't do that. So you'd have to move to Aurora. Like you said, you got to move to Aurora if you want to go to Aurora. Yeah. I, listen to this. You and I were talking about O'Carver, and I was like, yeah, there's nothing to do. Next to, there's a bar and a, a, a gas station called the Buckeye Pit Stop. A guy I graduated with used to own it. I don't know if he still owns it. Austin Shorty's a, he's a funny guy. Anyhow, the billboard right above it is for Benton Carroll Salem Schools, which is Oak Harbor. And it's like, open and roll today. They have a billboard right outside Oak Harbor, right, dude, it's just off the school property. It's on the Buckeye Pit, and it's, dude, I took a picture of it. They advertise for their school that it's open enrollment. That's crazy. Now, what you got to understand is you could put Kenston, Aurora, and probably Chagrin Falls, and maybe like one other district. You could put all those all those school districts inside of Oak Harbor School District. That's crazy. It's and massive. Teacher. It's three huge townships. Um, it's three townships, and you could put yeah, you could easily put all three of those ones I just said into that. Into that one district, so it's it's crazy, right? Like, yeah, you can put really Riverside crazy. and Menor in in Oak Harbor School District. Dang, that, that's nuts. And they're D three, they're they've shrunk a lot. The school shrunk a lot. I told you, my nephew, who's was a one eighty two this year state qualifier, here's a district champ. He, uh, you know, they live they live a good like fifteen minutes from the school. We grew up twenty minutes from the school. Like we were on the border of Genoa and Oak Harbor. Really? Dang. 20-minute drive to school. Yeah. And it was all country roads. Really? Yeah, about a 14-mile about a drive. We were closer to Clay, Eastwood, Genoa, Lake, like Millbury Lake, and there's one other school. Oh, Woodmore. We were closer to five other public schools that we could have gone to. That, wow. Yeah, Cardinal Stretch and Wait, Wait and Oak Harbor are about the same distance from us. Like Toledo Wait. Yeah, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, it's real. Not everything is real. Oh, Northwood, that's closer. It would be closer for us to go to Northwood probably too. Yeah, I'd have to check out the map, yeah, but it's – we're not we – You, guys, you guys were always D2 until a few years ago, right? Yeah, and then so what happens, they got the nuclear power plant and then that started – they kept talking about shutting it down and that's where most of the people – that's the industry in the community. Um, they have a couple other things. They have northern manufacturing. But like I said, it's just – it's apples and oranges. It's just like you, we, we talked about. Anderson moved from Lima. Lima doesn't have the Great Lakes like Oak Harbor's got a bunch of coastline, you know? Yeah. They got a national wildlife uh, refuge there. You know, they got Davis. But they, so they got kind of a lot more going on. There's nothing going on in Lima, dude. Dang. Nothing. Yeah, I think they got a refinery and a tank, tank factory, and that's it. <laughs> it's like, hey. Yeah. He said it was a different world when he moved here. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Um, moving forward for you guys next year, you never hide from competition. What, what does Aurora do next year? You got your, you uh, want to be in the top 25. I know that about you. You want to yeah, so win. Um, right now, you know, we're, we're kind of brainstorming with the schedule. Um, we're weighing out the pros and cons of the beast. So ideally right now we want in just the month of December to be Ironman, Beast, and Brexville only. And then – That's your we'll December? Be, say that again? That's your December? Yeah. <laughs> You're nuts, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> That's what we want. Sink or swim, to huh? 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my you know, God, you're crazy. January, January doesn't get much easier because we go, we'll always go to Top Gun as long as we're deep too, just because I like them being in that Alliance gym. Yeah, and that's where your district is. Atmosphere is, it's different in that Alliance gym. So before we go to districts, I like to be in there. So we'll go Top Gun, uh, the GIT, and then our conference. Wadsworth and your conference. Jeez, oh, yes. Nowhere to hide on your schedule. Okay, so Dylan Fishbeck, state runner-up for you last year. He lost in overtime um, as a freshman at a middle weight, which is pretty amazing. He's basically your leader. He's like, I, you know, some people might say he's your best guy, whatever. We could sit here and argue about it for hours. But you got him on your team. He's coming back. He's a junior. He does obviously, he misses out on, you know, trying to win a title. That guy is who you kind of built a lot of this around, right? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, He's a stud, that's for sure. Uh, he's kind of our quiet leader. He doesn't say much, but he's always working, doing extra stuff when people aren't looking. Uh, probably cut the most weight on the team just because uh, it was going to help the team out. So Ethan could go 170. So uh, he, he's probably a buck 85 right now, buck 84. So he's 70 or an 82 next year? Uh, 82, 95. 82, 95. So he's going to get real big. Yeah, he, he plays football too, so we're going to hit the weights really hard and try to pack on a lot of healthy weight. And we just think the big he's not going to be any less of an athlete or any less of a wrestler the bigger he gets. So He was cutting weight to keep it going. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so he he's kind of – he's one of our leaders. He I always know he's working hard. He does a lot of stuff right when people aren't looking, which, I mean, hey, that's why he was second as a freshman and – he only went four full matches all season. Besides, he cut out Beast. Beast was his first time back from football. How did he? He do was our only kid with Beast. How did he do Beast? He took seven. He took seven. He lost first round, but then beat that kid. Uh, the match to place. Oh, he beat that guy in the blood round. Yeah, Jersey guy, PA guy. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird how they did seating there because the kid who beat him first round is a two-time going into that tournament was a two-time national prep placer. From where? And Dylan was state runner up and UWW plays her and they hit each other first round. Yeah. But they do a lot of weird stuff at, at Iron Man and Beast. Some of the guys who get seated and don't get seated and then how the, a lot of those you know, like you, it's landmines everywhere when you look at those two tournaments, right? Yeah. Um, so So that is your guys' freaking December. Your December is Iron so Iron Man Beast. So the number one, the number two tournament. And about the number six or seven tournament with Brexville. Yeah, that, that's the plan. We're, we're applying for Beast, and I, I would assume we would get in. I mean, you got how many returning placers? Uh, well, I mean, none because of this year, but... Uh, no, no, got, Dylan, no, with with uh, Beast, I'm saying. Oh, Dylan was the only kid who went to Beast. Only, he, of, so, he, uh, so you'll get back into started. Beast. Yeah. Whoever you want in Beast will get into Beast. Okay, and then Iron Man, dude, they got to take you. Are you joking? Yeah, we'll, we'll go. We'll go into Iron Man. They work pretty well with us. Yeah, Iron Man should have you. Um, dude, the crazy story about Iron Man this year is uh, my buddy Kevin Roberts. He was uh, the assistant coach at Oregon State. He got my nephew Ian a job out there at Oregon State, and um, his kid wrestles for Coeur d'Alene High, which is Idaho, North Idaho, right in the Panhandle, of Idaho. You know, uh-huh. probably like an hour and fifteen minutes south of the Canadian border hour and a half maybe, in the Rockies right there, beautiful area. So his his son, Drew Roberts, who, they came out for the Ironman. How long were they here? How long was their trip? How long were they here for the Ironman? I want you to just, just think off the top of your head. Uh, two days. They came in on a Wednesday. They flew in Wednesday morning. They left their house at 6 a.m. on a Wednesday. Got here at like 4 in the afternoon. Worked out in Kenston's room. Um, I think we went to Kenshin's room maybe once or twice. They were here for five days. Dang. So you don't know how lucky you are. I guess it's the whole point of me telling you that story is you guys go 20 minutes to Walsh. This guy was here for five days. Yeah, that's crazy. And he took seven. He took seven. He lost to Niffenegger and Mick Burnett. Well, that was a brutal weight class, too. Beat McComas. Beat, uh... Henson. Wow. They both defaulted to him. But 
And he beat the guy from Seneca Valley who's tougher than nails. He beat a bunch of really tough PA guys. Look, it's you know, it's it's landmines everywhere. Um, what do you want your guys to get out of his turn? What do you want Dylan Fishbeck if you can get him into the Iron Man next year if the Florida doesn't make a long run into the playoffs? What do you want him to get out of Iron Man? Uh, you know, I just he misses out on Super Thirty Two because of football. Uh, last year he missed out on Fargo because of football. So getting into one of those national tournaments just. You know, uh, he, he likes to look at the rankings and see that he's ranked. So you go to Ironman, you do a great performance. It's going to pretty much lock you in for the season. Uh, but, you know, I just want him to go out there and show that I think he can be the best. I think uh, I, sky's the limit for him. He, he's, he's just a freak athlete. He, I mean, he could do a backflip. He, he, he's just unreal. He gets better and better every time I see him. As a freshman, he maybe scored with three leg attacks. It was all short offense and this year he comes back and it's all lake attacks it's, it's, it's it was crazy to me is he a division one football player uh i don't think so wrestling's wrestling's his main sport but you know, he, he likes football you he, he got to have that break because that wrestling grind is it's different than any other sport yeah laparo i want to say laparo is going to like ashland or something down laparo maybe he's going to mount, yeah. union, mount union maybe <laughs> Um, I saw a couple other guys who I, I thought were, I was impressed with, you know, they were like upper weights. Uh, Ramey from uh, Patrick Henry is a couple times state placer in Division Three. I think he's playing like at Heidelberg. But, you know, a lot of these guys, um, Mich- Mr. Michigan in football, he was at the, uh, for Brighton. He was at the Mommy Bay Classic. I was impressed with him. Oh, I bet. He's a stud. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I didn't know he was that good of a football player. I might have to check a game out, dude. What's he play? Uh, linebacker. He's a linebacker, huh? Yeah. So if he keeps so they, growing, they got, dude. they got a pretty good team. I think uh, 14 of the last 15 years they've been in the playoffs. Aurora has? Yeah. Oh, my God. And, uh, and maybe three or four final four appearances, and they won a title in 08. Jesus, please. Um. You know, I talked to Clay Wanger about that, one of your guys' big rivals, Wadsworth. Um, and he talked about, you know, like Wadsworth's always had really good – they've always had, like, amazing guys who have wrestled and played football. And we're talking NFL guys, Bobby Jones. You know, he played for the Giants, played for Penn State, made the NCAA tournament for Penn State, never knew that. We're talking Bobby Jones, uh, Mr. Ohio, Boffman. They had Mr. Ohio in football was on there. was a four-time state placer for him. Yeah, that's – yeah, I, I watched him play. He was a beast. Yeah, right. You know, when I when I first got in the, out of college and I started coaching, I had a real eye opener with um, Perry up on the lake. They took second in state, I think, two years in a row. And I, I realized, you know, one of the secret ingredients to being a great high school team is you have to get some big wrestlers that play football because they're going to be they're going to be athletic. A lot of these teams, we get football players that happen to come out and wrestle that are big. I looked at that Perry team like, man, these guys are wrestlers that play football that are big, like uh, um, see the Shank brothers and yeah. uh, Billy Miller, they had Billy Miller, and they had another ninety-five. They all play football. Yeah, but Evan Shank. I first. teach with their. I teach with Shank's uh, mom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. Great, great family. Yeah, really good people. They go to one went to Duke, one went to Gardner Webb. I think the Shanks. Yeah, yeah. The one who went to Gardner Webb did a couple trips with us to Disney. Yeah. But that, like you're saying, Dave, Dave Rowan did a pretty good job, I think, of like kind of doing that, like what Clay Wanger and John Gramulia do with with Wadsworth. You guys yeah. obviously are doing something like that. It looks like at uh, at Aurora right now. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Um, this past year, we with Dylan was the only kid, but we had 18 freshmen on the team, and probably 15 of them played football. So, do any of your other guys play football? Are they multi sport athletes? Like I like that when when people aren't just focused on wrestling and then they're 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 multifaceted, but all the who who are all the sophomore who are all the district champs who are all the guys coming back? We had uh, um, Cody Kerbo as a state alternate at 106, but uh, he'll probably be back at 106. He's a little undersized. Uh, Nick Willingham was a district champ at 138. He uh, very very unique. I mean, he was kind of the kid that the team was built around originally. Okay. Multiple time OEC state champ. I was just gonna say, I was just looking. Cuervo, I just uploaded Cuervo's finals match from two, 2018 OEC. Yeah, we had in that sophomore class. I had a pretty cool picture. We have uh, four junior high state champs. 
Yeah, I was just so, I was just looking at some of those matches. I just I was just messing with some of those matches from the 2018 OAC. I'll have to shoot you a couple of those links. You can check them out. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd love to see that. So, um, but um, Willingham at 38. He uh, Willingham, you said? Yeah, he, he's he's tough. He won the district. Uh, he didn't wrestle at all the entire off season. He he needed a break. Uh, so beginning of the year, you know, he was losing some matches, and people were saying stuff, and I was like, at Iron Man. He, he didn't wrestle well. He lost. I go, guys, he's been on the mat for three weeks. Just wait. Wait till he's three months in. He's going to be a totally different person. And got better and better and won the district tournament. And he was feeling great about himself. And then uh, Tyler Lillard at 152 is a sophomore. He's a, he's a stud. He's one of the most entertaining kids to watch wrestle. He uh, he was a district champ. He Fishback's should, hey, a district he, champ. He probably was in a pretty good position to probably win the, the GIT as well. He got hosed pretty bad yeah. on an edge call. Do you remember that? Yeah, that, that was that was crazy. Now, who, who knows how the match would have went? That was the second period, but I didn't like I didn't like that call. And that I dis- great- I disagreed with that. <laughs> that that was not. Yeah. And I think I was doing something, so I didn't see it in match. Maybe I was like looking down at another phone. I got all this. St- I got. Do you realize I have like three cameras going? Do you realize? That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on. I got and I, I have a short attention span, so I actually was looking down and missed it. So I had to go oh. re, re go watch it, and I was like, "Oh, I, I didn't see that live. That wasn't a takedown." Yeah, Dude, I don't that think was, that was a college takedown. Yeah, I don't think so either. That that was crazy. <laughs> you know, horrible Tyler call. Tyler was a joy this year. I watched him, like he was a kid that you could see with your eye get better and better every single week. Every single week he started performing better. He got comfortable with us, and uh, he had a great draw at the straight tournament. Uh, he was ranked second, and Brody uh, Brody Conley was ranked first. He was on the opposite side. Uh, T- T- Douglas Terry was on the opposite side, so we had, we had a nice draw. And ah, man, really wanted to see him compete at the state tournament. And then uh, he's the type Evan of guy. Andrew, he's a really bad draw at the Ironman. Brody, who, who Lillard, Brody Lillard's a really bad draw oh. at the Ironman. He is. He comes in with some criteria, though. He uh, he took fourth at Fargo. And he placed at uh, Akron too. So he, so he might be like a guy who they slot at like a thirteen or fourteen or however. Sometimes they go way high into into some of those seedings. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting. He's he's better at freestyle and Greco than he is at folk style. Wow, that's so interesting. That helps with Iron Man. Yeah, you're right. Well, I wouldn't want to wrestle with Iron Man. That's not the guy I want to wrestle first week of the season. I'm gonna tell you that much. No, yeah. After traveling so, across the country. <laughs> Yeah. That's not the guy I want to wrestle. No, he, he's a stud. And then uh, Fishback was a sophomore, was a district champ, and just so dominant. And then at 195, Evan Anderson's a sophomore. He was a district champ. Had great district tournament. Beat Mara, who was ranked third, and then beat Paulus from Louisville, who was ranked second. Who is the <laughs> other loss that Dylan had? He had two losses. He avenged one of them to a prep school guy. Who was other Dylan's other loss at uh, Beast? Um, it was a kid, a kid from Waynesburg at, uh, OPA PA. guy. Yeah. And was it, was it a mat wrestling mat? Was it a match that was an Ohio match? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, Augustine, Augustine, the kid's name was, it was, uh, it was, it was a tough go. I mean, it was, it was a back and forth match, but, uh, you know, that was his first time back on the mat from football. Kind of tough. Like, all right, we're back. Let's go to beast. That is that's an Iron Man match next year. You realize that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's an Iron Man match. That that's an Iron. If they're they're separated, maybe an Iron Man final. But that guy might not jump three weights. You know what I mean? Or Dylan yeah. might jump three weights. He'll be ready to go. Um, I mean, we gave him two more weeks or another week after that, and he went and won the Brexville, beat Gilcher, four-time Michigan State champ in the finals. So so crazy. <laughs> he had a great year, man. Um, yeah, he did. Who was ranked? Who were the so Conley was the number one 152 from Colombian, right? Yep. And then was Martin ranked ahead of you guys at 45? Yeah, we split, so we beat. Yeah, Martin I had that that crazy team. match where he wore yeah. Martin out. Martin attacked him a bunch, and he yeah. eventually wore Martin out. Martin wore himself out. Yeah, and we lost him at the state duels, and I'm I'm gonna take some blame for that. Uh, Graham did a great move originally. Our game plan, like looking at Graham's lineup and our lineup, we were going to bump from 45 up. We were just going to forfeit the Martin and 
bump everyone up. So I had David mentally prepared to wrestle Trace Brown, not mentally prepared to wrestle the returning state champ. And what Graham did was good. They weighed in there 52 at 45, and they won the coin flip. So we were we were screwed. You had to present so first. We had to present, and uh, they waited for us to present. So I don't think David was mentally prepared for that match before it started. So that's why I was really looking forward to Columbus. Okay. Uh, how, what's the? Did you and McIntosh go to the same college? Yeah, we both went to Campbellsville. Were you guys teammates? Uh, for like four weeks, I got in some trouble there the senior year. Okay, and so you guys uh, were teammates for a had, minute. So do you? Did you know him? And did you like have? Yeah, yeah, I knew who he was. He's 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 a class act. I'll tell you. Give him some big props. Probably about two hours after they said that the tournament was postponed. He called me and uh, congratulated me on a great year and apologized that we didn't get to have a great team race and a great battle and keep doing good work. And I was like, wow, man, what a, what a class act. I'm going to have to give McIntosh a call, man, see what, he's, see what he has to say about all this. Because you know those maniacs, dude. They're they're training in the cornfield right now. They're, oh, They're probably. shadow wrestling probably. in the cornfield. They don't even care. <laughs> um, what are the rules right now, Johnny? What are, I don't even know what the rules are right now. We can't. According to the OHSA, we can't do anything. It's a total dead period. So what's a kid do who wants to go? Like I can tell you, my nephew's lifting. Yeah. Not at O'Carver High School, but he's lifting. Yeah. We we have a great lifting program. Um, we talked about Tim Quartet. His brother Nick Quartet does our lifting program. Is it his but, twin? Uh, no, no. He was a little bit younger. I think he graduated in '98. Okay. He uh, um. I don't know. I don't know where he wrestled at in college. He took there, but he does all. He does. He got real into the strongman. He does a nice mix between like strongman and CrossFit. He's pretty close with Dustin Myers, so he does a lot of that stuff. Oh, I lost you. You Hold paused on. me, buddy. Is there? Yeah, no. I'm here. I'm here. But uh, I mean, he's he's closed down right now too. He's just he's like I can't risk it. He really can't do anything. So I got a bunch of my kids sending me Snapchats every day and make them send me Snapchats of them doing pull-ups, staying some motion. <laughs> so <they're> just, <laughs> sounds like Fishback's just over there strapping on the feed bag and lifting probably, it sounds like. Yeah, you know, he's that big and he really hasn't even lifted yet because we don't have the opportunity. But I mean, He's doing core work and pull-ups, push-ups, and sit-ups that – I mean, I feel like that's probably what most people are doing right now. Yeah, but like I'm saying, my brother has a owns a workout facility. Yeah. So they can go there. They, he can go yeah. there and he can he can work out. He can do what he wants. You can't stop someone from doing that. No, if they own it, I mean, what, what are they going to say? Yeah, well, you can't say a thing. Yeah. Um, that's wild, man. And it's like, it's, how many it's kids? A crazy time. What's that? It's a crazy time. I mean, there's no freestyle right now. We'd be getting ready for. Freestyle. Kabbalah comes in and runs our freestyle st- club, and I mean, we, we, we're not doing that right now. It's just, it seems weird. Yeah, what's a guy like Adam Kabbalah do? This is like, you know, I look at like Mike Kozicki and Adam Kabbalah. This is like when they really start, like, those guys are freestyle guys. They're really heavily yeah. on training kits for Fargo. That's what Mike Kozicki, you know, that's where they make, literally where they make their living. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's that's a rough time for them right now. Yeah, man. Wow. Um, and then, did they move? Uh, they moved the the Fila Juniors to I want to say Spireson. Didn't they do something crazy like that? Uh it's it, it's Spire Center, isn't it? Yeah, Spire. That's what I said. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's wild, man. That is crazy. Cause that place is huge. Yeah, I've never been there, but I it's I huge. It's, it's unreal. It's unreal. It's like two of the Akron Fieldhouses together. Really, son of a gun. It's huge, dude. Huge. Hey, do you think Anderson's still awake? Yeah, he, he probably is. I'm gonna have to hit him up and see if he wants to still talk. I can see that. I'm gonna have to hit him up tomorrow. He'll probably be up at 4 a.m. for his run. He might be. Him and Cumberland are probably both still up. Yeah, but he he. I'm saying he's a Naval Academy guy, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got to do his 4 a.m. run and make his bed and. He's yeah, getting... and up to his life got a lot tougher with Cola getting that job. Uh, I think that, that that's – no, I think that that's even better, man. I think that he'll embrace that. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. Know, that guy's yeah. He's pretty good. He'll be all right. What weight is he? What weight did he qualify? 70? Oh, uh, yeah, 170. Did he wrestle did he Jack Leonard pitch? at the district? No, no, no. So, uh, Layman from Revere beat both of them. 
Ethan beat Lehman at uh, sectionals, and then Lehman beat Jackson in the quarters of the districts, and then beat Ethan in the uh, finals of the district tournament. Okay, so you guys were running up with Leonard third? Yeah. And I interviewed that other dude, uh, Ethan Hernandez. Yeah, he's, he's, he's tough. He's, like, real tough. Ethan Hernandez yeah, is real tough. Ethan Hernandez is going to Penn. Yeah. Ethan Hernandez is like his best stuff's ahead of him. Just like I think Anderson's best, you know, his best wrestling's ahead of him. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I agree. I agree. They're gonna be good. I mean, so. Ethan's a state placer. He's pretty green. He didn't start till eighth grade. Are you serious? Yeah. And he got into Annapolis. Yeah. And this, kid, this guy moved into your school district from Lima, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing something right, man. That's awesome. Um. Fargo, if it happens, is that something, you know, we just talked about Kabbalah. Um, is that something where, is it going to happen? What do you think? I just, I want your, just, just give it to me. Give me your gut feeling, Papish. God, I don't think it's going to happen. I look at the Olympic trials got moved to 2021 and I just go, wow, I don't, I don't see how that's going to happen. Yeah. And they suspended everything through early May. Did you see that? Yeah. They can't, oh. uh, they took, they took all your charter. If it was a USA wrestling event, you can't. Posted under them and they won't allow. Yeah, it. it's uh, it, it's a killer because my kids love freestyle. I mean, it, it's it's so much more laid back and not as stressful as in season. And they, and they make a lot of gains through the freestyle season, and it, it's killing me right now. Are you like Todd Haverdo? Do you have hobbies? He said he has um, no hobbies. Yeah, I, I have I have some hobbies. I. Uh, I mean, I, I like to go out on the boat. My buddy's got a boat. Uh, I, I go out. We go to Putin Bay, like we were talking. We go to Putin Bay a lot in the summer. We got a house up at Putin Bay. Oh, okay. So. You got a house up there. Okay. Whereas Todd sits around and worries about wrestling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm still, it's on my mind a lot of the time during the day. So, I mean, if I'm working, I'm doing something by myself. I'm just constantly thinking ways to improve the program as a whole things that we need to do, things that we need to work on. You know, um, when the when the brackets came out for this t- state tournament, I thought, we're going to win it. I had 100% confidence. I go, we're winning this tournament. I'm going to put five or six in the semis, and we're going to win this tournament. And, uh, yeah, I, I'll never know. But, I mean, I was like I was working today, and I'm just thinking, damn, maybe we didn't prepare right for this, or we didn't prepare right for that. Or, you know, I'll, I'll harp on, I always talk about, not worrying about our opponent and 15 seconds at a time and doing all the mindset training stuff we did. And I did not with Cumberledge against Graham. I had him focus on somebody else and not Martin. And that's the match. We lost the duel by a point. He wins that match. We, uh, we win the duel. So, I mean, just little things like that. I'll think I about just, all day. I, like, I'd be honest with you. I'm, I'm my own worst critic. I was looking today. There's some, I missed a wrestling match somewhere along the line in one of those OEC events that I was doing, and it was like a match that I, I some it wasn't even me that missed it, but like I was talking to Jared Opfer, I was like, dude, that's unacceptable. We yeah. have to find that match. We have to find the parents of that. Like if we don't have the match, somebody has to have the match. Like that's unacceptable to me. I'm I'm my own biggest critic, I guess I would say. Yeah. Ethan Anderson just texted me said, am I doing the interview tomorrow? So he's awake. He might be doing it tomorrow? He, he asked if he is. Yeah, he's that's awake. cool. We'll do it tomorrow. That's cool. I'll, I'll shoot right. him a message or something. Coach, any airing of grievances? Anything you want to tell me? Uh, you know, next time you see me, you're going to punch me in the face. I don't. Anything you got for me? Anything that, that I missed? Anything that we're not talking about? I'll just, um, yeah, stay, stay safe. I mean... Maybe, uh, you know, it sucks the state tournament was canceled, but this is as bad as they say it's going to be bad as it seems. I guess it was the right thing, and, you know, stay safe. Listen, if you want to give yourself a lot of anxiety, I, I, I did it today for like 20 minutes, turn on, here's what you do, jump news networks. Jump from CNN to MSNBC to Fox News to whatever you want to. Local, You can go local if you want to. You can go Fox 8. Uh, action 19 I don't care if you want to give yourself anxiety that's what you do sit and watch the yeah, news yeah. plug that give yourself yeah. a 27 four twenty four seven feed of, of, of cable news network if you want to be really scared go do that yeah my wife does that I, I, I don't watch the news right now 
Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm all set. I did it for 20 minutes today, and uh, it was uh, it's, that was the longest two hours of my life, that 20 yeah. minutes. You, that's you're an outdoors like. guy. you got to love all this hiking you're getting in. Oh, yeah. I took my kids hiking. They get filthy now. Now their big thing is they want to walk in streams because you, you and I were texting back and forth, and I was out hiking. Yeah. Um, they the, the youngest one just needs to fall down in the stream to figure it out. I'm like, no, nah, I'm constantly like, no, nah, man, you're going to fall <laughs> down. Honey, don't do that. You're going to fall down. Oh, and then eventually after like third or fourth time, I'm like, you know what? You just need to fall down. You'll figure it out. Just figure it you'll out. Figure yeah. it out. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. And you'll, you'll figure it out with your 20 month old because she's just a, she's about eight months behind, seven months behind my, my two year old. And they, once they want to start going, they want to start going, man. Yeah. There's no stopping them. There's no stopping them. All right. Sure. You don't have anything else for me. We good. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, stick around. I want to talk to you a little bit afterwards. Um, let me cut this live feed and let me cut your other one. All right, Coach Papish, thank you for right. the time. All right, thank you. Stick around.